Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to vote in the poll for the next character you want to see, and like and subscribe for better saves the next time you play. Maybe. This week we're looking at the leader of the Jedi Knights, Yoda. Making his first appearance in The Empire Strikes Back back in 1980, Yoda has been a staple of the Star Wars universe, keeping the dark side of the Force in check. I'm Yoda. I'm a soldier. I'm Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to use the force, lifting, pushing, and pulling objects we choose. Next, we'll make sure we have access to non-combat aspects of the force, seeing the future and sensing the dark side. Lastly, we'll make sure he's a nimble fighter skilled with a lightsaber. For stats, we're gonna be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. You can roll if you want, just make sure you're hitting these multi-classing minimums. Wisdom will be number one here. The force is strong with this one. Intelligence after that, it will help us with our force powers. Dexterity next, Yoda is a nimble little dude. Charisma is pretty good for someone who speaks in reverse, so keep that pretty high. Constitution's on the lower end, he's old but still fairly tough. Finally, we're going to be dumping strength, no need to lift something when you can levitate it. Yoda's a small green guy with pointy ears, and to me that screams goblin. You get plus two dexterity and plus one constitution, 60 feet of dark vision, nimble escape, which lets you disengage or hide as a bonus action, and fury of the small, which lets you add damage on attacks and spells equal to your character level once per long rest. For your background, Acolyte gives you insight and religion proficiency, so you'll know all the secrets of the Jedi Order. We'll start off as a fighter for acrobatics and history proficiency. You also get second wind, letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level once per long rest, and a fighting style. Duelist lets you add two to damage rolls when you hold a weapon one-handed, leaving the other one free to use the force. Speaking of the force, we'll jump to wizard next. At level one, you know first level spells. Catapult lets you use the force to throw objects weighing five pounds or less at a target. They make a dex save equal to eight plus your proficiency proficiency plus your intelligence modifier. Failing that, they take 3d8 bludgeoning damage. Jump triples your jump distance for one minute. Identify lets you determine what school of magic and what a magical item does. Feather Fall removes fall damage on up to five creatures by slowing their fall speed. Charm Person is a Jedi mind trick, charming a creature that fails a wisdom save for one hour. Detect Magic lets you see magical auras for up to 10 minutes, allowing you to sense what type of magic they are as well. While all six of these spells can be in your spell book, you can only have a certain amount prepared per day. That amount is your intelligence modifier modifier plus your wizard level. If you lose this book, you'll have to make a new one, so keep it out of any flammable trees. You also get some cantrips. Light is a light you affix to something, perhaps a saber, that creates bright light in a 20-foot radius and dim light 10 feet after that. Mage Hand lets you move small objects within 30 feet of you at will. True Strike gives you advantage on your next attack, but it takes a whole action and forces you to maintain concentration until you make that attack. It's not great, but Yoda is a patient fighter, so it's in character. Level 2 Wizards get to choose a school of magic we'll be looking into the school of divination. This gives you a portent, meaning that you can roll two d20s at each long rest and keep those numbers. You can replace an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw with one of these rolls before the roll is made and use it on any creature you can see. So if you roll high, help yourself hit. If you roll low, make an enemy miss. Third level wizards get second level spells. Blur makes you harder to hit, forcing disadvantage on any attack rolls made against you. Hold person paralyzes a target within 60 feet of you for a minute if they fail their wisdom save. Levitate lets you raise an object that weighs no more than 500 pounds and move it around on your turns. Unwilling creatures can resist with a constitution save. Detect thoughts lets you read surface level thoughts to sense the dark side. You can probe deeper if that target fails a wisdom save. Finally, magic weapon turns your saber into a lightsaber, making it magical and giving it plus one to attack and damage rolls. Remember, the amount of spells you prepare is equal to your intelligence modifier plus your wizard level, so pick five spells you like in the morning. Fourth level wizards can take a feat. The alert feat gives you plus five to initiative. You can't be surprised while awake, and the enemies don't have advantage on you just because you can't see them. Useful in case of Order 66. We'll hop back into fighter now. Second level fighters get action surge, letting you make one additional action once per long rest. Third level fighters get to pick a martial archetype and will take Eldritch Knight. First, you get Weapon Bond, letting you summon a weapon back to yourself as a bonus action with the force. You can also learn some new spells, two cantrips, Message lets you send short messages to someone within 120 feet that they can respond to. For the next cantrip, just check the wizard list for something you like. This kind of covers all the official Yoda-y things. For first level spells, Mage Armor gives an unarmored target AC equal to 13 plus their dex modifier for 8 hours. 
Thunder Wave creates a 15-foot cube in front of you that forces a constitution save and deals 2d8 thunder damage to creatures that fail, pushing them 10 feet as well. Finally, Shield increases your armor class by 5 as a reaction. You're a multi-classing caster, so look at the multi-classing caster chart on page 165 of the player's handbook. Wizard levels count as 1, and Eldritch Knight levels count as 1 third for determining what level of multi-claster you are. Level 4 fighters get an ability score improvement, raise the intelligence for higher saves and better spells. 5th level fighters get an extra attack, so you're swinging that lightsaber super fast, making 2 attacks instead of 1 when you take the attack action. 6th level fighters get another ability score improvement, once again, higher intelligence, higher saves. 5th level wizards can learn 3rd level spells. Haste gives a target of your choice double movement, advantage on dexterity saves, plus 2 AC, and another action on their turn, letting you jump all over the place dodging enemy attacks. Protection from energy gives resistance to acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage to a target of your choice. The lightning would be useful against the Sith. Counterspell is a reaction. It shuts down a spell of third level or lower automatically and can shut down higher level spells with an intelligence check of 10 plus that spell's level. Sixth level wizards get expert divination, meaning that if you cast a divination spell of second level or higher, like detect thoughts, you get a spell slot back equal to or lower than the one you used. Can't ever go higher than the fifth level, so don't go too crazy on it. At the 7th level of wizards, you can learn 4th level spells. Arcane Eye lets you create an invisible eye that you can see through and move it 30 feet with an action. It lasts up to an hour and can move as far as you want without going to another plane. Locate Creature is better for finding someone specific within 1000 feet of you, which it does instantly and lets you know if they're moving. 8th level wizards get an ability score improvement. I think your dexterity could actually use some help here. Otherwise, round off odd numbers in Wisdom or Constitution. 9th level wizards get 5th level spells. Contact other plane lets you communicate with creatures on other planes, like Qui-Gon. Make a DC 15 intelligence check, otherwise you take 66 psychic damage and go insane until the end of a long rest. But if you don't go insane, you can ask the creature 5 questions, which it will answer briefly. Telekinesis lets you move things within 60 feet of you for a minute as long as you maintain concentration. If you're moving anything unwilling, you make a contest of your intelligence and their strength. You can move things up to 30 feet, but not beyond the spell's 60 foot range. Telepathic Bond lets you and up to 8 creatures communicate telepathically for 8 hours over any distance, unless you go to another plane. Dominate Person is a much stronger version of Charm Person, letting you fully control someone who fails a wisdom save for up to a minute. Hold Monster is the same as Hold Person, but without the restrictions of a humanoid target. This might be a good place to end the build, but Yoda is a Jedi Master, so we'll make all of these things stronger with a few more levels. 10th level Divination Wizards open their third eye, letting them have a perceptive bonus until they're incapacitated. Now you already have dark vision, so I'd go with ethereal sight. This lets you see into the ethereal plane for up to 60 feet, so you can see force ghosts. Your other options are greater comprehension, which lets you read any language, or see invisibility that lets you see invisible things within 10 feet. 11th level wizard learns 6th level spells. True seeing gives a creature of your choice true sight, and the ability to see secret doors and up to 120 feet of the ethereal plane. 12th level wizards get an ability score improvement, and this is our last one. I recommend pushing up that dexterity and balancing out your casting and dueling abilities. At the 13th level of wizard, you learn 7th level spells. Reverse gravity reverses the gravity within a 50 foot radius cylinder with a 100 foot height. Creatures can make a dex save to grab onto something fixed to the ground within reach, but if they have nothing to grab onto, they have nothing to save with. If they hit a ceiling, it counts as a fall from the height they traveled, and creatures take fall damage when the spell ends as well. Our capstone here is 14th level of Divination Wizard, and that gives you a third portent die that you can use per long rest. Remember, those are the d20s you get to roll at the beginning of each long rest. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable of a build this is. First, we have a ton of utility spells as a Divination Wizard, with the ability to have 18 to 20 prepared in a multitude of spell slots. Second, you're pretty formidable as a melee fighter, with the haste spell and a plus 4 dex modifier, not to mention the 20 damage you can do as a goblin once per day for free. Finally, those portents are important, letting you... <laughs> Finally, those portents are important, letting you have some control in a chaotic world of Dungeons and Dragons. As far as negatives go, you'll have to be creative to do a lot of damage with your spells. Reverse Gravity is probably your best bet, but it gets cancelled out by anything that flies or has some version of Slowfall. There's also the issue of concentration and a low constitution modifier. You'll be dropping spells left and right. Finally, your health is generally pretty low, sitting somewhere around the 100 mark. Ideally, though, you'll be able to use your connection with the Force to stop conflicts before they start. In the scenario where you have to fight, stay nimble, use those portent die, and act as a disruption of the enemy's plans. But don't be shy about using that insight proficiency as the dark side of the Force lurks in all of us.
Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you liked the video. Love will be in the air around the time of our next video, so your choices this week are tailored to a very special lady. Vote for Garrus from Mass Effect, Krom from Fire Emblem, or Alucard from Castlevania. I'd also ask you to come back for the next week's video, but I already know that you will.